If you want to combine rigid bodies with hair dynamics, then this is the tutorial for you. You can always get these blend files at my Patreon or my own website in the monthly program. So let's just get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is gonna delete this default cube. Then we're going to add a UV sphere and we're gonna click on W to make it a shade smooth. So we're gonna duplicate this and then scale the bit down. And we want, I don't know, four or five of these spheres. So just put them around here. What we then want to do is we want to make sure that all of these become rigid bodies. So just select one of your spheres, go here into physics properties, then click on rigid body. And now this is an active rigid body. The big one we want as a passive. So make a rigid body type passive. Now you will see if we play this, our active will fall down and our passive will stay in its place. They will still interact with each other. So now we want the same rigid body system on all of these small spheres. So I'm going to select all of them and then as last the one with the rigid body settings that we just created. Go to object, rigid body and then copy from active. So now they're all copied on top of these smaller spheres. Now if you play this, you can see that they all fall down. Great. But we don't really want them to fall down, right? We want them to go towards this sphere, which is going to be our little hair ball, let's say. Now, it's very easy. You just add a force field here, force. And you can see that if you put the strength up, so 200, you can see that now this force field pushes away our spheres, right? If you do minus 200, it actually kind of attracts them. It sucks them in. So if I now play this, you can see that they go towards it. But our gravity is too strong and this is why they won't really stay on top of the sphere. So I'm going into our scene properties, rigid body world, and then go to field weights and put the gravity from one all the way to zero. And now you will see that if you play this, that they all get attracted to this sphere. The one thing that I want to change though is the friction because right now the balls don't really move at all. So I'm going to select this big sphere, go into my physics properties again, go to surface response and put the friction lower. I'm just going to put it at zero. And now you will see that these spheres will start rolling a little bit more. So now that we have our whole rigid body system, we want to add hairs. But hairs and rigid bodies do not really work together that well. So we need to do a little step in between, which is baking our rigid bodies into keyframes. To bake the keyframes, we need to select all of our small spheres. And let's also just do the big one. Then go to object, rigid bodies, and then bake to keyframes. Let's do from frame one till frame 200. Click on OK. And now the animation is baked to our keyframes, as you can see here. And if you select your small spheres, you can see that they don't really have a rigid body anymore. The cool thing is that if we give these a collision now, they can work with our hair system. I'm just going to put this collision on every single one of them. So collision, 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 and collision. Then we're going to delete our force field. We don't need it anymore. And we're going to select our big sphere. We can kind of get rid of the rigid body. It doesn't really matter anymore. And we can start to add a particle system. So click on the particle properties and click on plus. Now we can add hair. So when we create our hair, we want to make sure we put on advanced and also the hair dynamics. Hair dynamics is needed to actually make our little spheres in which we put a collision to interact with the hair. Okay, so make sure that is on. Also, if you want to change this, and you are like in the middle of your timeline, you won't really see any of the changes happening. It kind of is weird. So if you put the timeline at zero and now change it, then you can see that we get a lifetime update. So try to do it at zero so you can really see what is happening. So first the hair length, I like to put at, let's do one. We want to just make it shorter and the number is going to up like two or 3000. Now let's go to source and emit from faces. Let's change that to volume. So you can see that now we have a kind of a more of a random length in our hairs. When you do from faces, it's all the same length. When we do from volume, 
of these hairs spawn from a yeah a point inside the volume so that makes it more random what i do not like here is that they all just yeah grow out straight i want them to grow out also a little bit of a different directions so if you go to velocity you can do this with randomness as you can see here so don't go too high as you can see that can create some weird yeah results so just a very low number like 0.04 0.05 something in that range as you can see now we have some randomness in the growth direction and that is um, Yeah, that was what we are looking for Let's go to physics next in physics We can add some brownian which can create some random curviness in our uh, Hair which is very cool. So yeah play around with that don't do it too much But it's yeah, it's quite important if you want to make more of a softer looking hair Let's say or more of a, a fur type of hair um, Yeah so you can see what it does here. We can create some of these yeah, curly bits or whatever it is. And uh, don't put it too high as I already said. But what we also can see is that our hair now have these sharp edges and we don't really want that. We want them to be more smooth. Um, in viewport display, it is shown as strand steps. So if you put the steps up, you can see that it gets more steps and it will be more smooth. But this is only for the viewport. So we have to go to render and put it to, let's do B-spline and then put these steps up. These steps we cannot really see right now, but it will be shown inside the render. So just put it up and you can put the viewport display down again because it's not really that necessary. But um, yeah, it's just for you to look at how it actually becomes in your render. Now, one very important thing that I like to do is go to children and do interpolated. And now we got a huge change here. All of these hairs that we had before will now have a certain amount of children. The display amount now shown is 10, but the render amount is 100. You need to think about how much you want that. I did not do 100 in my final render. I did like 30 or 40, um, and it still gives a great result, so you can do that. And you have a lot of options which you can do with your children, let's say. So now if you clump them together, so now every hair has children around them and then you can clump these together right so you can create like really cool stuff so maybe put the clump a little bit up um, to get more of these kind of tufts let's say and with roughness i also like to play so maybe uniform if you put that a bit up you can see that you can create some very cool stuff it's kind of a yeah cloud texture i think over the whole model and with the just randomness down here you can change it per children uh, group, let's say. So um, yeah, just play with both and you'll see some cool results. The next thing that we want to do is we want to look how this looks in our animation. So if I play this, you will see that it starts to fall down. Very, very cool. So now we want to start to think about the fact that how far do we want it to fall down? Do we want it to fall down like this or do we want it to be a bit more stiff? In my opinion, this one I did a bit more stiff. So inside the hair dynamics, underneath structure, you can put the stiffness a bit up. I think I did around 1.5 or 2. And now if we play it again, you will see that the hair stay a little bit more up. And this was kind of the result that I was going for. The one problem here is that our hair still needs to relax before the spheres fall on top of it. So what we need to do is we need to select all of these small spheres and just move these keyframes further away. So we can do it, like let's say, at frame 50. And if we then just, you know, then our hair is relaxed. As we can see, it fell down. It had some time to relax. And around frame 50, our animation starts with our spheres. And they will start to jump towards here. They all have a collision modifier, so they will also collide with the hairs in mind. So, we want to render from there. So our start can also start at 50. And I think the end should be 250 because I don't want to make it too long. So this is very simple, very easy. And now I would like to bake my hair dynamics. So just select your hair and maybe you even want to save your file before. So you can just go here to file, save as and, and then just pick a name that fits. And now we can go down here into our particle system cache and we can start to render our simulation keep in mind you still want to bake the hair dynamics from frame one 
not from frame 50 because on frame 1 we want to start it so it's all the way relaxed around frame 50 so from frame 1 till frame 250 and then just click on bake now that our bake is done we can start to think about the materials and where we will put our camera so i'm just going to click at zero to go to my camera view and then go to view and click on camera to view and I want to look around frame 50, 60 to see where my um, yeah my spheres come at. So around here, um, let's look. Yeah, I can put my camera around here. Something like this will be okay. Then put camera to view off so we cannot like move it by accident. And we can start to think about the materials maybe. So for this sphere here, I'm going here into shading then we can create some hair materials so let's just do hair then delete the principal shader and we're gonna add a hair principal shader but where is it it's not here very true it is only available inside cycles so go to cycles i like to put my device at gpu and put the performance tiles up only do this tiles up around 256 if you use the gpu if you use the cpu keep them low now we can get our principled hair node. So here, principled hair, bam, and put it in the surface. I cannot really show you what it looks like right now because I know my uh, computer is not really strong enough for that and OBS starts to lag. But this essentially already gives a, uh, yeah, more of a brown color. But I like to create more vibrant colors. And the way that I do that is create a color ramp. Color ramp. Goes into the color here. And I like to have two different colors. So I think I did like pink and blue in this case. So let's do blue here, pink here, uh, whatever. Something like this. And then I want them to work at the gradient. Because if we now will look at it, you could see that it was just a little bit in between here, right? It's not one color at half of it and then another color at the other half. So I am going to use a gradient texture here. Gradient texture goes into the color. And then with a mapping node and a texture coordinate node, which has to go in front, texture coordinate. We can control this linear gradient texture. So with the hair, it's really hard for me to show you because it just, you know, my computer is a bit too slow for that. I will just show you very quick with a diffuse shader and all of the other settings are still the same. If we have this mapping node set to the texture coordinate, then you can see that we have a very cool uh, gradient texture. You can change this gradient as well, but if you like turn this off, you see that it just takes the middle color around here, right? But if we put this on with everything else in mind, you can put the fact actually, with everything else in mind, then we have this nice gradient. And the colors of the hairs will be exactly the same so here will be blue hairs and here will be more pink hairs you can move these around to whatever you want as you can see but you can also change from linear to maybe spherical um, and whatever you want right so here you can see spherical and then i can move this around again uh, just play around with it because sometimes you have to put also the texture coordinate maybe at object sometimes that might be better um, i would highly suggest you just playing around with this and see what works for you but most of the time, I just have this at linear, um, this at UV generated or object, and just see what works for you. Because yeah, generated would also work great in this case. And of course, also here, the mapping node gives you a lot of abilities because you can change the position, for instance, here, but also the rotation. Because if you want to rotate this, you can just do it like this, right? So those are all options which I did and that is essentially whatever you need in the scene. I hope you guys learned a lot from this and yeah, if you came this far in a video, please consider subscribing and liking my video. Subscribing will help you as well, of course, because you can see whenever I put on a new tutorial or video. And um, yeah, just have a fun day, guys. See ya.